Okay, so this is the second part of the Git version control session that we had in the previously on, on Canvas. Um, I'm just going to recap what we did. You can skip the recap and go to the timestamp uh, that I'm going to include somewhere uh, right, right on the or the left here. Uh, so we said that we have a shared repo, right? This is where all the team members are going to be um, finding their participations or finding their contributions of each others on the Azure DevOps repos, right? So we said that a repo is just a, a storage for code. Right, this is what is a repository is or a, a repo, just for short. Okay, so the shared repo we created remotely on Azure DevOps repos. All right, you can create this on GitHub. You can create this on any platform that support the Git version control system. We used Azure DevOps repos. All right, so we created a branch for each member. We said that there is a default branch. Right, this is the branch that is going to include the final version of the code by the end of the day right and we created a branch for the team leader and the team leader created a branch for himself um, the other members have created branches for themselves right after we created all of these branches and note that each branch that was created was based off the of the main branch which was at the minute it was empty it only had if i just go back here it only had the readme file right and i told the readme file or md.md .md, this is a markdown file this is just an overview of what should the product has or what should the um, coding files or the source code has right you can write some stuff if you want you can edit this this is just a template given to you by um, Azure DevOps you can edit it as you want right but I'm not going to do this for the time being um, so this is the repo that is um, created it just has the readme okay so if I go to the main branch this is the main branch so we created a branch for each one I've created a branch for the team leader myself and I've created a branch for the other team member and I've simulated that the one who is in Opera here or the one who is in Opera browser this is the team leader right that has his name capitalized right the other member who is in Chrome right he has his name lowercase like that right that's the second member here that's just a demo to what you should have in your product Okay, so I have two members, that's the team leader here, and this is mine, this is my branch on the Chrome browser. So we have two members, one of them is the team leader and he's on the Opera browser. So as you can see, both of them can see the main branch, can see their own branch, and can see the other team members branch, right? So if I open this from Chrome or Opera, the view is the same since I have the repos on this product, okay? So after we created, um, um, a branch for each member on the remote repository and note that each branch was actually built of a based off uh, the main branch which is currently empty has only the readme file once we are done with this I told you that everyone is going to pull or clone his own branch on the local machine right so in your own local machine let's say that this is the team leader local machine I'm going to bull or clone my branch here and I'm going to write all of my tasks or my technical tasks on my local machine here the same thing for the other members that are going to bull or clone their own local uh, their own branch on their local machine okay so the same branch that existed for me on the remote repository I'm going to copy it and pull it or clone it on my local machine right and this is where development or local development starts okay just a quick note whenever we say that we are developing locally we are using git right whenever we say that we are pushing stuff or working or remotely then we are using azure devops repos right but anyways once you clone or pull your stuff on the local machine you start writing code right so you start for example making some changing um, after you make the changes, the untracked changes, you stage them. After you stage them, you commit them, right? So after they are committed, this is commit one or snapshot, um, snapshot one, right? This is the first version. You make some changes. You add more files, for example. You stage, then you commit, then you stage, then you commit. So you have multiple commits here right so this is my timeline for the leader for example the team leader after the team leader finishes all of his changes right let's say that the team leader finishes all of his changes and he added all of the required technical tasks of his so he added all of these in his local branch once
finishes all of their work something called What I'm going to do is to show you how can you push all right and how can you create pull requests to the team leader and then um, how can you m if you have some conflicts or something I'm going to give you a very quick example on how to solve them solving conflicts all right so let's see how can we do that um, before I show you how to push into your remote repository let's say that in the previous video we finished I showed you how can you um, create branches, create other branches to work on, create test branches, um, how can you commit, how can you show the history of commits, all of that. So now this is the time to push to the remote repository. But I want to show you something. Um, I have here a project that doesn't have a repo. I just want to show you how can you create a repo because I didn't actually include that in the previous video. So if you are completely new and you don't have any repo, this is the dashboard that you're going to see if you want to add a repo right so you can choose any of these options I usually tend to go with initializing this so I go to initialize and you can have a readme this is the, the same readme file that we have before and you can add a git ignore file the git ignore file actually you can specify that this git ignore is going to ignore anything related to Python since our product is based on Python alright so this is the git ignore file once you initialize, I didn't have this in the previous video, but the get ignore file, basically, if you look at the content, is going to look at stuff, our code, uh, uh, at, at scripts that, for example, you don't need to commit, you don't need to include in your commits. It's unnecessary. Some um, IDEs like Visual City Code, and if you've seen the previous video, um, Visual City Code tends to create some folders that are not needed for me, that I never asked for. For example, this is a folder. Um, that Visual Studio Code on my machine creates that's unnecessary for me right and this is another file that Code Runner creates it's called Tim Code Runner I don't need to add this or add these alright so whenever I commit I just want to commit the changes that I've made same thing goes for this folder this folder here right I don't I don't even need this folder right I just need the main page that I've created right so this is the only page that I will create changes in and I will need to track these changes in and I will want to stage and commit not the rest okay so you can include anything for example that starts with a dot any folder that starts with a dot for example any folder that has the buy cache in its name okay um, any folder that has the word uh, library um, right so all of these are just scripts that can be ignored whenever you are committing just to make the commit size as small as possible right so that's a good thing so this is basically what you're going to have whenever you create a repo or you initialize a repo you can create multiple branches that I've created this in the previous video for each team member so I'm just going to close that for now now I'm going to go to the <coughs> project that I was working on 
I'm going to go to rivers. Notice that I have multiple rivers. Usually, you're just going to have one for the first sprint at least. Okay, so at the remote repository, I don't, I always, I only have in the main branch here. I only have what I only have the readme. And if I go to my branch as a team leader, I only, I still have only what only the main branch, right? Just to recap here, if I went to my local development area you're gonna see that we have created the main page in the previous video in the previous lab on canvas okay so i can go to the product folder this is the product folder by the way that was the folder that i've created in the desktop let me just show you uh, so this is the folder that i've created in the desktop and this is the folder that we have cloned from the remote repository this is the git repository here that we cloned from the remote repository which is azure devops servers right so if I just go here and right click and git bash here right you are going to see that this is in fact this is a git ribble since it has this branch name I just want to show you what we did in the previous uh, session right so if we did git log you are going to see all of the commits that we have created from before and of course you can okay um, that's a quick note by the way if you did so many commits and you want to get out right you can just keep on entering enter until you reach the end button and you can click on all right um, colon right and then Q and you are going to exit this um, log screen or log history so we had another version that has a more compact way to make logs which is get log with the flag one line so this is going to give you a smaller version of the id or the hash index that each commit has right so we made like four commits here all right so this is what we have if you want to check out to another branch let's see the branches that we have so you can say just branch that we have created we can click on r to see the remotes as well so we have the main we have the um, my t team leader branch so we have the other members branch all right so I can just say git check out and notice the following if I go to visual CD code or any IDE you're going to see that you are currently on the team leader branch this is what we've said in the previous lab and this is the same exact indication but from the terminal view so if I check out to the main branch right you are going to see that now in the main branch notice how visual CD code has changed the view so the main branch which is an Azure DevOps servers it just has the readme file that's why you are seeing only the readme file that's it all of these folders with the dot here these are just added by visual CD code so you, you, I didn't add these manually you don't need to bother with these okay and notice that we are now on the main branch okay so if I go to the terminal I'm in the main branch let me check out back to my team leader branch and hit tab to complete the um, name and hit enter then I'm in back in my branch and I finished the main page since I finished the main page notice that we actually did this or created these as tasks so let me just go to the sprint so I finished the main page right so I'm just going to push it and now my branch is done and once I push it on the repos into the repos I'm going to say done just one quick note before pushing anything by default um, I just want you to see the following whenever you are in your repos right sometimes you are going to find a strange error regarding permissions wise that you can't actually push to a repo so to put this on the side and to make the pushing um, process a little bit easier for everyone go to product settings right and then go to the repositories and then go to the repo that you have created by the time I think you have only one repo so far so just click on this one whatever the name of this repo would be and then go to security and then add or make every one of these to be allow like for every column of these the administrator the one who created the Azure DevOps project I think he's the one who needs to be in charge of doing this so I'm just going to be in project collation administrator set everything to allow all right I'm not going to do this because this is going to take some time I'm going to set everything to allow for this one and 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 if the there are users as well use, or you need to make sure that everything is set to allow for the product itself set everything to allow okay so by the end of the day let me show you once this is done how it's gonna look like let me go to repositories 
from product settings and pick up my repo that I'm working on and security and notice that I've set everything to allow here right if you didn't do this you will not be able to push okay all right so go back to the repos and let's see how can we push pushing is really easy you're just gonna say get push u origin and then what branch do you want to push right in this case if I just go to the graph let's say that I finished my work on the team leader branch and I want to push my branch to replace the existent empty branch here right so consider this to be an empty on the remote repository so I want to synchronize what I have done locally with the stuff that is or with the branch that I have the same branch name that I have on the remote repository okay so I just want to push the content from here to this branch that I have of mine um, uh, on the remote repository okay so I'm just going to go to the dashboard and I'm going to say get push you origin and what branch do you want to push the content of your current branch to I want to push the content of my current branch to the co to the to, to my own branch as well but on the remote side on the remote shared repository on Azure Divorce so I'm just going to head this okay so let's take a look at Azure DevOps let me refresh and now you can see that everything that I have notice that this actually this file is not needed but that's because I didn't have a git ignore file if I had the git ignore file initialized I wouldn't have this unnecessary file push but I'm going to leave it for the time being what really matters is that we have pushed the main page the, this is the content here right that we have created on our local machine okay now let's do the same stuff I'm just going to go to boards and I'm going to update my things so sprint and I'm going to set this to be done and I'm going to handle the other team member I'm going to act as the other team member now from Chrome and I'm going to do my task first of all I'm going to build the search page okay so this is in progress let's go to Chrome I should have actually done that from Chrome but anyways should have put it in progress from the Chrome um, view here but anyways it's in there so I can go to ribos you can see the other team member which is the team leader you can see that he did this code you can open his files and see the code that he's written um, in your own branch as the lower case one here you can't see anything I didn't do anything so far so we start the process at, as I've told you any member is going to clone the repository is going to clone the empty repository right the clone the um, the main um, repository here okay so we can just go to clone from these dots here and we can clone it in Visual Studio Code I've showed you in the previous lab right open Visual Studio Code yes um, it's gonna ask you because this cloned folder or cloned ribbon needs to be inside a folder so I'm just going to create a folder and I'm going to say team member 2 or team member 2 right project chatbot just to differentiate from the other folder that I have for the team leader so that's the C the second team member and I'm going to select this to be the repository location um, I think it's going to ask me if I want to open it a new window I'm going to open it in a new window right um, yes yes I trust that okay so now let's say that on the right this one okay that has only the readme this is the second team member and on the left here this is the team leader who have created the main page right so let's pick this guy um, workspace here right? and let me go to the folder that I've created for the second team member I think I've created this in the documents let me just um, check here and send the documents I believe or the users I'm not sure where did I create them um, okay one second let me just pause this okay I have no idea where did I created it but okay if I if I'm that lost I can just right click and say reveal and file explorer and it's going to show me yes I've created this in users in my user account okay so it's here right so inside this folder this is the clone repository that we have cloned all right so I'm just going to open the terminal here right click 
okay and notice that I'm on the main branch which only has the um, the readme file from the remote repository this is what we have cloned so far right I can actually check the other branches so I can just say git branch r and we have multiple branches now I can say git check out if I want to check out and check for example the team leader branch right let's say that we want to check his work or let's say that we have some work that is dependent on the files that other other member has created or the team member team leader has created so I can check out to his branch and now I have his main page script and now I can add my scripts right or I can take this content as I've showed you in the previous video I can take all of his content from here and create another branch right maybe that's a testing branch or uh, or another uh, a testing branch of mine or another branch of mine maybe I have two main branches all right that I'm working on so I can take all of his content from this branch and create another testing branch or another second branch for me to base my work on his work right so we can take all of this content and put it in our branch but for the time being I don't really need the main page I'm not, I'm not going to pull any of his content all right so I'm just going to check out to my branch that I've created on Azure DevOps uh, repos okay so notice that my branch notice that it tells you that this file is not there anymore because the, this file doesn't exist in my branch and now I am in my branch so I'm going to create a search page dot by and I'm not going to waste any time doing this because I have I think some code that represents the search page here okay so I'm just copy and paste this here notice I'm gonna tell you that this is on track changes so I'm just going to control s and we can check the status of the current triple it's gonna tell you that this needs to be staged so I'm going to state everything add then check the status and go it's gonna tell you okay it's gonna tell you that this has stage has been staged but it needs to be committed if you go to the Visual Studio Code you're gonna see that it's awaiting for uh, committing right so I'm just going to say get commit and um, and I'm going to say something like search page is created usually you will have multiple versions not it's not only one commit that have um, the entire work of yours your work needs to be done on um, on a gradual basis on multiple commits right and baby steps this is what I mean like what we have done in the previous video but just for the time um, time wise or time sake I'm just going to put everything in this page and commit it in one commit um, is created all right um, we can check the log of the commits let's see one line notice get log one line notice that this is the first commit here where we have created or Azure DevOps has created for you the main branch and it has added the readme file and this is where we have created in our branch right head means that this is the current branch that we are in so say this is the indication here so this is the head that is pointing to the current branch so in this current branch that we are in we created that commit right with that ID right all good now let's push so I'm going to do the same thing git push u origin and I'm going to push to my branch remember you finish your work locally so on the remote repository you create an empty branch based on the main which is also empty then you clone it to your repository you clone that branch within uh, you know, the entire repository you clone it including your branch you clone it to your local machine and once it's cloned open up or check out to your local branch make the changes stage commit you finish all of the commits then push the content that you have created on the local branch back to the remote branch right the mirror that you have on the remote repository in Azure DevOps okay so everything keeps on um, keeps uh, synchronized right all right so let's push on my uh, branch on the uh, remote repository origin here means the remote repository right so I'm just going to push the content which is basically the search page to my remote repository which currently if I go here it doesn't have anything it doesn't have anything okay so once we push everything is going to work let's refresh this and you're going to see that this is a search page um, just a quick note sometimes you will be asked for something called a token right maybe I was not um, 
uh, prompted to enter any tokens or passwords or credentials because I did this beforehand, right? But you can uh, you can be asked to authenticate, right? Authenticate whenever you are pushing, right? So in order to solve this, you need to generate a token and just place that token in the password field. In the terminal, you are going to be asked for a password, just like that, and the token that we generate on Azure DevOps, right, is the token that you are going to paste in that password field. So I'm just going to show you how to generate a token just in case this has popped in front of you before you do the push, before all of this push is created, right? So to generate a token, um, so you go to personal access tokens from here. Notice you click on your profile from here and personal access tokens. And in my case, I've created one. That's why I wasn't asked to enter any token at all, but you can create one from here, right? Give it any name. Let's say that this is going to be called, I just called this one T, right? So you can just call this token um, Sprint1, for example, something like that. Um, most probably you are going to want to set the duration to be 30 days so you don't periodically whenever you push you get asked to enter a token or not right but um, um, for this uh, scenario I'm just going to leave everything as it is right you can give it full access if you don't want to have all of these stuff so just put full access right to give the full authorization to do anything any kind of pushes that you want right so I'm just going to create this one right and this is the token here that's the serial or the password so once you have this right copy it from here and you are going to go to the terminal the terminal is going to be waiting for you to enter a password now in the terminal don't click control v right just click right click just right click all right in unix by default whenever you enter or you click a right click this is being pasted the content is in the clipboard is being pasted right so just click on right click one time just one time right because if you did this and you did this one more time right two right clicks you have pasted this serial number um, two times consequently right so just one time in the password at the um, uh, prompt here just click right click one more one time just it and you have pasted that um, serial number and, that hit, and, and then hit enter and then the push is going to continue just as it is okay all right so let me just um, remove this. I don't really need that token, um, but I'm going to leave it anyways. So we have pushed here. We can see, as I've told you, I'm just going to go to the project and to the repos. In my um, repository, you can see the content of this file, right? And you can actually see a lot of stuff. If you want to see the commits, you can actually see the commits history from there from Azure DevOps as well. You don't also, or you don't need only to click on get log like that. You can check it from there. So you can go to history and you can see that we have only one commit created. This is the ID. This is the one who created it at the time and date, right? Um, you can do a lot of stuff here. You can browse the files at that specific point of time. So you can just browse the file at these commits. So at this, at, at this point of time, notice this is equivalent to checking out to a commit temporarily. If you remember from the previous video where I checked out single commits to see what in that commit, what was happening in that commit, right? What are the files that was included in that commit? Okay, so that was the current version of the file. Now I can go back to my main branch if I'm done looking uh, up the stuff in that commit. You can go back to the commit history. I only have one. Um, the compare stuff is going to be happening right now, but the compare is basically telling you that you don't have any previous commits, so this is not going to be visible. So let's go to the team leader to show you what is the compare is actually about. Um, so let's see the history. We have multiple commits in this one. Um, I can go to that last commit, for example. Um, I can here see the following. Let's say that I'm going to compare this commit all right which is added an offer section to this commit for example all right you're going to see that the commit on the left right had only the banner at the start at the minute right at that time it only had that um, um, navigation bar home solution about and in the commit that we are in we have added an offer section so we have added a new section right 
So this is just the compare. You compare multiple commits with each other, like a previous version with a current version, or the previous version with the latest version. That's the idea of the compare. That's it. Okay. So let's go back to the same team member. Now we have finished pushing everything. So let's just check the scenario here. I finished pushing my stuff, or I think there is another task. Let me just see the boards and the sprints. Yes, I've, this is done. There is another task. So let's create a search function that searches um, the hotels by their name. So this is in progress. I'm not done yet. So I'm just going to go to my local development area here. So I'm just going to call this search algorithms. Search algos.py. And I'm going to write some um, query string here. So this is going to be a documentation for the script. This is going to include um, searching algorithms, right? And I'm going to create a function. Of course, this function is not going to have any code. That's just an example. Define, um, let's say, search by name, right? I'm just going to write pass, but we are going to simulate or just imagine that this is a function that searches by name I'm going to write some doc strings for this function okay so implemented a function that uses for example linear search algorithm this is one of the search algorithms that you're going to see to search hotels by name and most probably you're going to need the hotel name here so that's just the final touch all right and that's it so this is a search script now notice that this is untracked so we need to first of all to stage then commit then push all right so get status as well now you have untracked changes now get add everything dot then get commit and i'm going to say added a um a search script all right including a you can have a commit that contains the search script as well and another commit that contains the function but i'm just going to do this in one go um to just not make this video any longer including a search uh function for names or hotel names all right Okay, so we have added the commit. Now let's push to our branch. All right. Now let me go and check if everything is pushed correctly or not. So let's go to files. Okay. Uh, so we have the search algos script. Okay, so we have this here. Now everything on my board on my tasks is done so i'm just going to put everything in, in in the done part once my um this user story and this user story is done actually we can go to the backlog itself or the boards of the product backlog and we can say that this is now is done both of these user stories is done right the team leader is going to put his in done and mine this team member which i'm in here in chrome is going to put his stuff from ink progress to done okay once we are good now let's say that if we are following the uh, scenario here this team member has finished his work so this is the time where that team member after the branch is done after the local branch is done and i have pushed and my remote branch is synchronized with my local branch i'm going to ask the team leader for a pull request i'm going to ask him all right i've finished all of my work please merge it to yours merge it to your branch right so let's see how can we create a merge or a pull request okay so i'm going to go to repos and notice that this is the team member view i'm on chrome here so this is a team member machine right so here we have updated my branch now we can create a pull request from here just as easy as this okay so i'm just going to say that it's going to include my name or my branch's name so the team leader knows who is this um, pull request is coming from and i'm going to say something like finished uh, my tasks and of course he can take a look at the tasks that this branch is assigned to and he can see that this branch or this team member was assigned to 
creating um, uh, searching by hotel names, a search page, creating a search page task, and search by name function, and this user story as well. All right. You can add some description if you want, saying something like, um, um, "I have completed." Uh, completed the search by name function and the search page script all right and you can add the reviewers basically these reviewers most of the time these are this is either the team leader or the scrum master which is in this case me but let's say that this is the team leader who's going to merge the content of this branch of this team members branch to his branch so let's add the team member uh, or the team leader which is the capitalized name here right and the most important thing um, is that you need to say to specify you what what branch do you want to um, uh, copy this content from into so in this case I want to take all of my content I want to pull all of my content into the team leader branch that's really important guys Right, so we want to push our all of content, our all of the content that we have in our branch into the team leader branch, right? The one where we actually push to the main, right? This is where we, the, where the team leader is going to do, right? The team leader is the only one who's supposed to um, pull all of the content from his branch and merge it into the main branch, right? So now we are asking the team leader, asking this reviewer, right? to pull all of, all of our content from our branch into his branch. You can take a look at the files you have actually here, search by uh, algos file and search by page or search page script here. We have only, we have two commits, the one for the search page, the one for um, uh, added a search uh, script like that, right? So once we're done, we can just create, we can create as a draft, but I'm just going to create, all right? So now this is the pull request. Okay, once the pull request is done, um, the team leader actually, we are here in the view of the team leader. This is the Opera browser, okay? The team leader either can go to pull requests and see the pull request that is created, or he can go to his mail, and you can see actually that there is a mail sent to me, right? Um, that Ahmed al for example, has uh, asked for a pull request, created a new pull request, and this is the name, the title of it, right? So can, I can just view it from here, Either way, it's going to open up the pull request. So it says here that it requires uh, some check. This is succeeded. The work items also must be linked. Remember when we, uh, in the previous video, in the previous session, at the beginning, I told you to check some policies in the branches, right? Whenever you create a pull request, you need to have work items linked. Um, you need to have at least one reviewer, right? So all of this stuff are mentioned here in the overview of the pull request. But that's not the most important thing. We have a description here that the one who created the pull request has added, which is this one. He's actually asking to pull his content from his branch into the team leader's branch, right? Um, so let's do the following. Let's see that this is going to be the one who reviews here. This is the reviewer, right? Let's say that it is required that this reviewer, it's not optional, is required to review it. Okay, so I can look at the files. I'm the one who's going to review. So I'm going to look at the files, okay? So I can see that this is the search script. This is um, the search page, all right? Um, we can actually click on view if you want to have a, dis a detailed um, view like that. Okay, so we can go back here. This is the view that we have. We can actually add some stuff if you want. You can view the history of this file. You can see, for example, this file or the history of the of the entire repo of this branch. We can uh, we can see that this file has only one commit. This file has only one commit related. Okay, so you can go back here. Let me just. All right. Um, we can add multiple stuff if we want. We can add a commit to um, like if there is something to me modified, for example. We can say something like this. Let's say that this user or this um, team member has created linear search. I use linear search to create this um, function, right? So I can do something like that. I can add a commit in this line and I can tell him, please use a more efficient algorithm or searching algorithm while implementing the search. Bye.
name function all right then I'm going to comment this all right and this is my only note here I'm not as a team leader I see that this search page is fine but the search algorithms this needs to be done with a different um, with a different um, um, uh, searching algorithm so I'm just going to set this to be bending since I'm going to wait for that guy for this um, uh, member to make the edits right and I'm going to do the following I'm going to say wait for author okay then we can go back to overview right it, it says here this the overview actually is the history of what we, what what the team leader is doing on the, to this poll request so here we have actually added a comment uh, comment in this line this is the comment and this line here and we have uh, we are waiting for the um, author to recreate that um, pull request okay so let's see from the team members side how can we had how can he handle this so I'm going to go back to my uh, search algorithm here. This is the script. This is the team member, and I'm going to do just as the team uh, leader has asked me. I'm not going to edit anything. I'm just going to add a new, add a new function, right? That searches by name. But for in this, I'm going to say I'm going to use the bisect search. This is one of the advanced algorithms as well for searching that you're going to take in the future. I'm going to name this version 2 right and once I'm done go back to my terminal here this is my machine so I'm just going to um, add everything and then commit I'm going to change the commit message um, let's say added a search function with a bisect search algorithm okay once you're done you can push to the origin all right and we can go back to our repos all right let's refresh you can see that this is the search algos now it has this here all right you can go here and you can add a comment you can say that this is the team the team member uh, speaking right now right so it can say if you refresh the pull request you can see that the team member he did that commit he added a commit that is based on that comment from the team leader so we have added a, new, a, a more efficient searching algorithm for the search by name function right and it can be seen from this history this history this commit right there right this is the commit that we have just created so you can add a commit something like that um, I'm going to mention him because maybe he wouldn't get a notification on the mail all right so I don't think that you can get a notification on the mail yes so I'm just going to mention him and say something like this please note that I added the um, a better um, algorithm for searching by name all right notice that all of this is necessary I'm just going giving you the scenario in case the team leader wants you to add some edits if everything is seen uh, or seemed to be fine by the team leader he can just go ahead and approve right it's just a symbol but I'm just saying in the case that there is needing to be some edits to be made so I'm just going to comment this as a team member and I think I should receive this notification over the mail I think I should receive it over my, over the mail but if I didn't I can just refresh the pull request all right and I can see that I was mentioned right then I can go to files and I can check now let's see this guy has added this um, search function that is uses using bisect just as I've mentioned or is that just as I've recommended to him he's using as an efficient searching algorithm so can I, I can actually say that this is resolved right so this comment is not necessary now right now we can go to overview and I can click on this uh, comment also to be resolved right um, I can do the following once I'm, 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 I'm fine with all of this I can actually 
um, approved now, right? You could have actually approved with, this, with suggestions, but I chose to wait for author to do the changes, right? Um, by the way, I didn't mention this, but you can actually add additional reviewers if you feel that the team leader is not enough for evaluating if this file needs to be merged or not, you can actually add additional reviewer. It can be me, the Scrum Master, or it can be Dr. Ahmed Khir, or it can be anyone. But for the time being, let's say that the changes that the team leader has been accommodated by the team member, right? And the team member has mentioned the team leader, telling him that I have added all of the changes that you've asked. The team leader went to the files and he checked that this was added. So he resolved the comment, right? Meaning that the, that comment is actually not needed anymore. Now we can actually approve. Um, so this is now approved by me. Okay, now we can actually complete. If we sit and complete, this is where we merge. There are three ways to merge. The first one was uh, the merge. This is the basic one, that's the merge, right? So this is basically, it takes all of the commits. Let's say that I'm going to merge Ahmed Al-Halak, that is in lower case, I'm going to merge all of his commits, all of the commits history to my branch. If you use the first merge, the first merge option, then you're going to take all of the commits from here. All of the history of the commits are going to be available, right? It's going to be available on the team leader branch, on the target branch, right? If we chose, for example, something like the squash commit, then we are just going to squash all of the history of commits from the source, from the team members branch, and put it just as one commit onto the team leader branch here. So we wouldn't actually get to see any history of the uh, team members branch if I want to as a team leader if I want to check what did th did this guy do what were the steps what were the entire log or history of commits I couldn't actually view them anymore if I chose the squish commit okay so I'm just going to stick for the first one all right then I'm going to complete the merge notice there were no merge conflicts I'm going to show you what is a merge conflict in just a second but for the time being there is no merge conflicts meaning that there are new two there are no two members who are for example using the same script names or the same function names and the same script something like that All right I'm going to show an example so now this pull request is actually merged and this pull request is done you wouldn't see it active anymore you can see it and completed so this is merged the beautiful thing now is that you can go to repos and you can check your team leader branch and you can see now you have the files that you have created which is the main page and you have also the files that the other team member that you have pulled the content from his branch into your team leader branch being um, displayed here which is the search algos and the search page script okay and if I go to history let me just go to the repos here and go to history this is the content that's the entire um, files in the repo this is the history you can see that um, this is the timeline that I was working on right so I have created a section for the main page I've created an offer I've created this is the, the commits that I've created as, as a team leader in the previous video in the first video first part right starting from here we have also the commits from the branch that we have merged into ours right which was the team members branch which is the lower case guy right so the other guy has created the search page the search script and the search function with a different or a more efficient linear um, or a more efficient searching algorithm and finally we have merged everything to be here so we have only one branch here that contains all of these if we added any commit after that it's going to be continuing on this merged branch right there right I hope this is uh, obvious so the point is whenever as a team member as a normal or not the team leader um, per se if you are a team member after you do all your stuff locally, push. After you push, after you finish, now make a build request. Once you make a build request, this is the time for the team leader to interact and to interfere and to see the active pull request from here, open them. He's going to, most probably, um, he's going to have, yes, uh, this is the mention that I was talking about. You get the mention over the mail. If there is any comments made by the author, the one, the team member who created that pull request for the team leader to merge into his, right? Um, uh, so, the, the, so the team leader, by the end of the day, just gets to um, review the pull request. If there is anything to be modified, he leaves comments on the files themselves, right? And he waits 
or approve or approve with suggestions right it's totally up to you right but the minute you approve is the minute that you can merge immediately into yours as a team leader um, afterwards right so this is actually the second part in a nutshell um, I just want to give you a very simple uh, example of what a merge conflict should look like okay so let's see an example of a merge conflict let's go to the team leader dashboard the team leader created only the main page um, note that locally remember from the previous um, part we told you that we have merged actually all of the stuff from the team member to the team leader right but the team leader locally doesn't have any of the search page or the search script right so we need to synchronize the remote back into the local right so what we are doing is that after the team leader has merged all of his stuff into or all of the team members stuff into his branch we need to make sure that this remote branch is also update, updated locally so we are going to pull the stuff that we have merged into ours from the team members into our local branch on the laptop that we are working on to everything to make everything synchronized right so do, so to do this first we need to go here all right let me just open up the terminal the other terminal this is the terminal of the team leader right this is the terminal of the team leader so first of all i'm going to say pull origin all right pull origin from the current team member if you call the current team member branch right which is basically ahmed like actually let's see what the other team member have so we can check out his check out like that so he has he still has nothing and it seems that the changes that ahmed has done on his machine notice that ahmed has locally um has where, where is it Ahmed has locally created the search page and the search algos and he actually pushed all of her stuff all of his stuff into his branch right so everything is updated but for some reason the team leader on his local branch cannot see this he cannot see Ahmed's work right so in a case like this we would do the following we would say we are going to pull all of the content from that branch right from Ahmed's branch to his branch that I've just checked out to right like this to make the changes that we've made or the changes that Ahmed has made on his machine locally and he pushed into his remote branch reflecting on our machine as the team leaders machine right so now after we did we do this we can actually see we can actually see that this is Ahmed's work right so we have manually pulled anything that we um, uh, believe Ahmed has pushed on the remote repository. But when we check out the updates is not available, we can see the updates. So if the updates is not available, so you have pushed into remote, but another team member is trying to find out these changes that have been pushed into remote and he cannot find it, then he can just pull from your branch. Remember, the pull always happens from a branch to the same branch right so I'm pulling from Ahmed's branch into his branch that I've just checked into or checked out into okay now let's go back to our branch check out to the team leader branch and you can see still the team leader only has the main page so what is the deal here it's the same thing if you go to the team leader branch you can see that the team leader has merged everything to his so he has the search algos and he has a search page so if the changes are not reflecting you can just do a pull so get pull from of course there is origin origin means the remote repository on iterative ops repos right and from my branch that is how that is having the current updated changes and once i do that i can see the changes that i've just merged onto Azure DevOps Rebels onto the remote repository, I can see it locally right now, right? So let's take a scenario where we actually have a merge conflict. I'm going to do the following. I'm going to create a file and I'm going to call it intents.py. And I'm going to say that I have the recommendation, recommendation like that, just like the one I've done in the video, recommendation like this. I'm going to have only one word or two words suggestion like examples on the intent or uh, let's say just suggestion or recommendation like that right and I'm going to on my branch locally here I'm going to get add stage first and then get commit and I'm going to say 
added a an intent file all right and then let's push to our branch push u origin to our branch all right and i can go now to my remote branch i can refresh and i can see that there is a folder called intent was created that has only this line right let's do the same exact thing from the other perspective from that user right so i'm just going to refresh the other member lowercase member here and i'm going to say that this member as well is working on the same intent script okay so let's say that this member let's open up the terminal of the other member this is the terminal of the other member here let's say that this guy is going to be working on the same intent script so let me go to his workspace and i'm going to add to his search scripts here the same file with the same name all right with the same name intent and i'm going to add another intent let's say this is going to be greeting maybe he's adding a different set of intents all right so let's say this is going to be greeting um hello howdy hi and so on all right let's do the same exact set of steps let's first add notice that i am on the other team member machine and i'm going to commit added an intent script right has only intent for greeting all right and then let's um, push it to our remote branch okay I can go now to the repos and I can in my branch I can see that I've um, just pushed the intents to pi all right so we have added the intents to pi the problem would be whenever we create a pull request asking the team leader to push our content our newly updated content to his there is going to be an intents to pi in our uh, branch and there is going to be also an intents to pi in his branch this is the minute where Azure DevOps is going to be confused. It, it's, it's not going to be able to know which content should I take. Should I take the contents from this team leader and leave it, which is this line? Or should I take the content from this team member from this branch and leave it in the script? So I'm just going to create a pull request and I'm going to create a new pull request, right? I'm going to say, this is my name. That's a good convention that I just like to use. This is the branch that I'm working on, um, added some intents intents all right and I'm going to ask the team leader to uh, review this all right and I'm going to ask it to merge it into the team leader branch like that and then let's create and notice there is a merge conflict okay so there is a merge conflict it's saying that intents that by is existent in both branches right it is in this branch and it is also in this branch so the way that you solve this the way that you solve this unfortunately azure devops doesn't give you the web um, experience to do the merge conflict or to resolve the merge conflict on the web right unlike github github gives you the ability to resolve the merge conflict on the web right but you can do this manually from the terminal okay so let me show you how can we resolve the conflict from the terminal, right? I'm going to go to my team leader. The team leader actually is the one, by the way, who's going to resolve the conflict. So I'm going to go to the team leader uh, terminal, this one, okay? And I'm going to do the following. It's really simple. I'm just going to do the following. Let's say that I want to pull all of the content from the team member branch into mine, right? So let's say that this is the current branch that I'm in the team leaders branch this is the current branch that I'm in now I want to pull all of the content from this team members into mine right so I'm going to do the same one that we have used bef from before get pull origin all right and I'm going to add um, get pull origin I'm going to type the team members branch here and this is a, a very strange or unique circumstance where you are going to pull the content from this 
team members into your current branch as a team leader and we only do this if there is a merge conflict in any pull request that is made by any team member all right remember that's that this is the only case scenario where you pull from a different branch into your branch as a team leader right so whenever i hit enter it's going to tell me that there is a conflict here all right so i can go back to visual city code and i can see something really scary happening here so whenever you hit um this git bull origin right it's going to tell you that there is a conflict right in the intents.py and notice that it's going to tell you the following it's going to tell you that the head the head pointer which points to the branches and currently on the ahmed al halak branch right so it's telling you that ahmed al halak branch has the following line as a content in his intents.py version right in this script of his he has only this line and from the branch that we are pulling from so from the branch that we are pulling from from the team member branch right we can see that the contents of intents.py has greetings as the content has this line as the content right so we just do this manually so the team leader decides do we actually need to pull this content from the team members branch into this file is this needed if he finds that this is not needed then first of all let me just delete this let's delete these lines right if he finds that this line is not needed from the team member branch then he can just delete them right if he find that this actually can be integrated and added to the final version of the intensive by that is going to mer be merged into his team leader branch then i'm just going to leave it and hit Control s um just note one thing what's really important is that in the merging or resolving the merge conflicts right we manually we manually resolve them like the the way i've showed you if i see that something is necessary to be included from the um the content that i've pulled from the uh, source uh, branch or the team member branch then i'm going to keep it right if it's not necessary then i'm going to remove it right but what's really important is that you do not add any content do not add any content in the resolving of a merge conflict that's really important this is called an evil commit by the way if you did that right if we added for example a new uh, intent that says something like hours info right and we added some stuff related to it this is called an evil commit so we don't really add any new content to this right so i'm just going to say control s once i'm done um forget about the grid ball we now going to consider this a new content added to intensify then i'm just going to add it or stage it then commit it like that and i'm going to say that the uh, message is going to be merge conflict in intents the pi is resolved all right once i'm done i will note that this commit actually note that i was in the area of the merging area you can see that this is called merging right so there is a merge conflict if i go back this red line should disappear like that so we are out of the merging area once we commit that we have resolved that conflict right once we are back we can just we have pulled actually the content from here we have manually resolved the content um, of uh, the conflict from uh, in our team leader branch and then we can just add this or push it into our remote repository push you origin to our remote repository like that i have an internet connection problem but this should push normal okay let me just do this push one more time okay are we, we are good if we refresh in the team leaders um, branch you can see that the intents um, has the contents that we have pulled uh, from the terminal and we have merged um, and resolved the merge conflict on the terminal then we have pushed into the team leaders branch all right all right the last thing that is left here is that the team leader after he pulls all of the content from the other team members into his branch right he needs to pull the content from his branch into the main branch that's this is the last step right um as we've seen there are two ways to create polls or make polls from a branch to the other we've seen how to do this using pull requests and iterative ops on the remote repository and we've seen how to do this locally uh on the uh, machine just we have as we've done in the resolving the merge conflicts okay so i'm going to show you how can you do this locally 
and let's start with this uh, method as well right so if you want to pull content from the team leader branch to the main branch first of all you need to be on the target branch right so locally I need to check out to the target branch then I'm going to pull from the team leader branch right so I'm going to do the following I'm going to check out from the uh, or to the main branch right this is the target branch and notice that in visual studio code I can see that the main branch doesn't have anything these files do not exist right so once I'm on the target branch I can now pull from the um, the source branch or the team leader branch in this case right so I can hit enter and it's going to pull the content from the team leader into the main this is the first way right just as we've done in the merging conflict scenario here where we were on the team leader branch and we have pulled the content from that team member which has a conflict inside of it to manually conf resolve the conflict that we had right which we couldn't actually resolve it on the Azure DevOps on the website Right. So this is the terminal or the local way of merging or pulling, right? Um, I think the easiest one is to use the pull request. So I'm from the team uh, leader dashboard on Opera browser here, I'm not going to create a pull request. It, it, it might sound trivial what I'm going to say here. Actually, um, we didn't talk about this. We have resolved this manually. We have resolved this manually. So the team leader, after resolving this manually, can just go to the pull request and say, that this is approved right and we can just close it that's it okay so and it's going to be uh, marked as completed anyways let's go and create a new pull request to take the content from my branch into the main that's the last step notice that the main should be the final version which you submit or you're going to have as the release right of the first sprint for example so I'm just going to say something like this um, there's no need to do that, but I'm just going to stick to the convention that we have created to just indicate who is actually pushing from which branch to the other. So I'm just going to say uh, pushing the final version into the main branch. Version, of course, I've written this uh, wrong, right? so the reviewer is going to be the same as the team leader actually in this case you can actually add the team, the scrum master okay so i'm just going to create here and since i've mentioned myself in this uh, in this um pull request i will be able to approve it right so i'm going to approve and i'm going there's no merge conflicts thank god so i'm going to complete and merge immediately and everything should be merged into and pulled from this branch into the main just give it a second okay so this is completed now now we can go to rebels and we can check the main branch it should has exactly whatever is inside the team leader branch right the only downside uh, is the following if we do this from the remotely just as we've did like we create a pull request then the team leader himself approves and merges into the main the problem is locally the main branch wouldn't actually have the reflected changes yet so this is locally here I'm on the main branch nothing is there while in the main branch actually everything is updated from the team leader so in order to make the changes synchronized between the remote and the local we do the same stuff that we have done from before so I'm just going to pull everything um, pull origin from the main which is on the remote this is the main that is on the remote I'm going to pull all of the content from it into the local main branch this one which has nothing and now you can see that everything is synchronized and every content that you have locally is the same that the content of the content in this branch that you have remotely right so the downside is if you use the um, um, if you use this version so we
right? So everything has a trade-off. Choose whatever suits you and do it, all right?